During the tribulation, rationing and measuring will not only be out of desperation, but as a means of controlling the people. Well, shalom and greetings from Jerusalem. Welcome to Lunchtime Prayer for Israel and our study of the tribulation as part of our series, The End Times. Well, today we're looking at the scales. Scales are the weapon of the rider on the black horse. Now, as we've seen before, God gave Israel and the nations warnings after warning of his inevitable judgment. Now, as we mentioned yesterday, several times in Israel's history, there were times of such severe famine that food had to be rationed and measured by weight. Let's look at Leviticus 26.26. 26. When I have cut off your supply of bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall bring back your bread by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. Yes, twice Jerusalem was under siege. As I said yesterday, the first time in 597 BC by the Babylonians, and then in 70 AD by the Romans. So let's look at Ezekiel 4, 16 and 17. Moreover, he said to me, son of man, I will surely cut off the supply of bread in Jerusalem and they shall eat bread by weight and with anxiety and shall drink water by measure and with dread that they may lack bread and water and be dismayed with one another and waste away because of their iniquity. In times of famine, even in modern times, there's been rationing. It's not unusual. We saw the need for rationing during World War II. In that case, it was to support the fighting troops. But then there are also rationing for political reasons. Consider, during the Holocaust in the Nazi concentration camps, the Jews were severely rationed as a means of torture. But, 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 at the same time that that was going on, many righteous Gentiles used their ration cards to feed the Jews whom they were hiding, thus risking their own lives. But to survive during these difficult times, people used ration cards even of the deceased, regardless of the reasons or the way the deceased had died. We saw that yesterday. And during the tribulation, rationing and measuring will not only be out of desperation, but of means of controlling the people. Oh, beloved, despite the chaos and the confusion of today, we don't like to think of the greater horrors that lay ahead. Oh no, we prefer to listen to the prophets who say, don't worry, oh, don't worry, everything is gonna be fine. Well, it might for a quick and little season, but it's not going to last. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Please listen to scripture. Listen to scripture and test all those prophets who are out there. We have to be careful. We really have to be careful that we are praying God's will and not ours. We want to see the good times roll again. Who doesn't? But that ain't going to happen until the Messianic Kingdom. And then we go into all eternity. <laughs> it's more than good times. No, that will be perfect times. But we've got a long way to go before that. And that's why we need to pray and pray a pray again for wisdom to recognize the signs of the times 
and then courage to warn all of those who still refuse to take God's offer of salvation and choose instead to go through the tribulation. And of course, many of them will not make it. Amen. Amen. You know, there is some good news. There really is, as I speak to friends and neighbors, that there, that there is a, a, a softening of some people's hearts because they want to know what's going on and they're ready to hear and ready to make a decision to accept God's offer of redemption, salvation, forgiveness through faith in Yeshua. But at the same time, there are those who absolutely, absolutely refuse. I had someone say to me once, recently, I shouldn't say once, recently, I would rather have my arm cut off rather than believe in him. You just keep praying, don't you? And just keep loving. And just keep focusing on him who will give perfect peace to those whose minds are stayed on him. And so with that, I do say, Nehitra Ot, Shalom from Jerusalem.